Whether you are a first time mom or this is not your first rodeo and you've had multiple children already, what we feel is very important is some information on how to prepare for the arrival of your newborn. Mm. In this video, we're going to be covering just a few things to help you easily prepare to ease your mind, ease the stress of bringing home a new baby, because as you can see, we are in the process of doing the same. So with that said, let's talk about it. We're pregnant. We're pregnant. We are having a baby. As we prepare for the arrival of our baby, literally in the next couple of days, mm -hmm. in the next couple of days, what would you say is some of the top things that you need to do to prepare for your baby? So there are quite a few things I think that you should do. And none of this is in any particular order. So mm. we don't want y'all coming after us like, you supposed to do this first. No, we just <laughs> give them the general, give them the general. Um, I think that there are definitely some essentials that you have to make sure you have, whether you're in a home or you're in a little apartment. There are some things that you should have to prepare mm -hmm. for the arrival of your baby. And that's definitely um, having a bassinet or a crib, mm. you know, baby's got to sleep somewhere. So yep. that should be one of the main things that you either ask <laughs> if you plan on having a baby shower or having someone host that for you, put that on the list. And f fun fact, fun fact, by the way, before you go deeper, newborns sleep 17 hours. Yeah, that's crazy. So of course the crib is very essential. The crib is, is vital. The baby's got to sleep and baby yeah. sleeps a lot. So yes, a crib or a bassinet is definitely something that you want to have. Um, and something that you should set up early on, mm -hmm. um, or at least a few weeks prior to your due date, because we all know, or at least I recently found out that only 5% of babies actually arrive on their um, expected due date. I know, that's crazy. Yeah, so there's a possibility that baby can come two weeks before and you want to make sure you have that crib or bassinet set up so you're good to go because like we said, baby's got to sleep somewhere. So right. we want you want to make sure you have that. Another thing that is very important is you have to have a carrier you need to have a carrier slash like car seat the hospital will not let you leave with your baby if you do not have that mm. and it has to be properly installed um there are tons of videos on youtube yeah you can on, look it up yeah. on youtube and that's exactly what we that's did that's what we did because we, we came with the instructions and we we're like it was kind of a little confusing so we yeah. looked on youtube and it made it very simple so yep. we were able to lock it in make sure it's secure mm -hmm. and go from there Yep. And if you feel like it's loose or you're not sure that you did it right, you can also go to your local fire station and they can check it for you as well. So if you feel like you watched the video, you read the manual, but something still doesn't seem right or the car seat is a little loose, you can take your car seat in the base to your local um, fire department station and they can um, test it for you as well to make sure that it's properly secure. But I'm sure prior to you leaving the hospital, one of the nurses will check as well. We actually asked that question when we did um a tour mm -hmm. of the hospital and we asked about the car seat base and everything and they said that they would check too yeah. to make sure that that was um properly installed but yes you definitely have to have a car seat you cannot leave with your precious baby <laughs> without it so that's definitely an essential um another essential is just having a conversation with your partner about expectations in terms of um are you going to breastfeed are you going to bottle feed um, are you going to formula feed? Because then you need to start thinking about formula and right. things like that. I mean, I know breastfeeding, it's kind of dependent on how mom's body responds and things like that. But um, if you decide that you're going to breastfeed or bottle feed do a, or do a little bit of both, you got to have bottles. You right. know, you got to have bottles and you want to make sure that you have the proper ones for a newborn mm -hmm. because babies only drink but so much in the beginning. You know, their stomachs are the size of a cherry we just learned oh yeah that's right yeah we just learned that <laughs> yeah are the size of a cherry so they can't drink that much in the beginning um but they do feed very often so mm -hmm. making sure that you have bottles and things like that um another big thing which shane is learning he didn't realize that babies need lots of clothing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you gotta make sure you have those onesies you gotta make sure yeah. you have a lot of onesies on hand unless you are comfortable with you know washing clothes often uh -huh. um but you know babies are gonna have accidents and blowouts uh -huh. and they go through lots of pampers from what we've been told so just making sure you have you know some some onesies and stuff on hand and 
a good tip that my family and I think some people have you some of your co-workers recommended as well is buying a mix of newborn items but also the zero to three months because you don't know how big your baby may be yeah. and they may not necessarily fit in all of these beautiful newborn clothing that you have so mm -hmm. having a backup supply of the zero to three months man those are some good tips mm -hmm. um me personally i would say you got to make sure that you have the stroller ready yes. to go yes have the stroller ready to go um plenty of diapers obviously plenty of diapers, plenty of diapers. we still mm -hmm. have some diapers to get but i mean we have a good supply mm -hmm. going so far for the first couple of months but you know those diapers yeah. are they they run out quick you can get mm -hmm. a, you get a pack of the 128 <laughs> and think it's gonna last a long time we we still we're still we're st we still don't know how long it's gonna mm -hmm. last but mm -hmm. hey if you've had a kid please let us know let yes. us know uh, but we, know. we know we have plenty of more boxes of uh, pampers yeah. to get. Yeah. Um, what, what, anything else? Yeah. I mean, the, there are, and like, we're not going to go through every item, but if you do have questions, of course, like hit us up in the comments and ask like, Hey, you didn't mention this or can you, are there any other things, you know, let us know. We'd love to engage and share that, but we're not going to go through every, yeah. um, essential item. You obviously want to have, you know, pacifiers and things mm -hmm. like that because, um, you know, babies, their first language is crying. And so you want to yep. make sure you have something to soothe the baby. Um, you want to have uh, swaddle blankets as well. Mm -hmm. um, or if you want to get all fancy, get the zip up ones that right. makes your life a little bit easier. Oh. So you don't have to, to manually do it. And while we're kind of on this on the subject. So we're talking about some of the essentials. But what about some of the small items that people often and even even us sometimes we forget like, man, this is really really necessary to get but it can be mm -hmm. like you don't really see it as essential or you don't think that it's essential mm -hmm. but it really is um that's a good question if i'm thinking just from a personal standpoint i would say that having like a rollaway cart mm. is essential because it provides additional storage i know for me we are lucky that we're in an apartment, so it's a little bit easier to move around. But if you're in a house or if you have multiple kids and you're trying to juggle multiple mm -hmm. tasks at once, it's nice to have that rollaway cart that's stocked with diapers, pampers, change of clothes, you know, um, extra wipes and things like that. And it makes it easier to navigate and move around, mm. uh, move around the house without being like, oh, man, I got to go all the way upstairs to yeah. grab the extra pair of clothes because the baby just had a blowout. But my other kid is over here and I got to uh -huh. feed, you know, feed this kid. I think that that would be very beneficial. And then additional storage, additional storage. Mm -hmm. um, and then as you were talking, uh, this item over here, what is it called? Oh, so that's considered like a baby lounger. OK, yes, a baby yes, lounger. Yes, yes. Having that lounger from what, um, you know, moms have told me that it's a lifesaver because one the good thing about the lounger is that it's plush enough that it sinks in so that it provides one support for the baby but two it, it the the goal of it is to prevent the baby from rolling over or yeah. falling over or rolling out of it so it allows you to freely kind of move around within your space mm -hmm. and you know that baby is secure so yeah. if you want to use the bathroom or you know make a tea or whatever it is you can sit baby in that lounger and comfortably know that he or she will be okay you don't have to worry about the baby rolling rolling out of it um and, I, then, mm -hmm. and then there was one other thing that i would say is going to come in great handy too and it's not really essential but it definitely makes life and makes your, your nose your nose <laughs> feel better on a daily basis and that's the diaper pail yes we have two of them we have them in both of our bathrooms yes and our like when we had our baby shower that was hosted by uh, my job one of my co-workers who now has a one-year-old he, he even said if there's anything that you should ask for he was like a diaper pail he was like because those diapers will blow your house up Oof. like the smell is Oof. serious and he's you know those diaper pills really help absorb and and lock in the odor yeah. so um yes if you can get one certainly do because i heard that they are a game changer and the last thing you want is to become 
nose blind. To, oh God! And then like, you have guests. And then you have guests, and your house smells <laughs> like a pamper, and you don't quite even realize because you're just so used to changing pampers yeah. left and right that you don't even smell it. That's kind of <laughs> like if you have a dog that just is a stinky dog, yeah. and then you get nose blind to it, and then you yeah. have guests over. Because I've been to people's houses where it's like, yeah. damn, it smells like dog up in yeah. here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like you don't smell your you don't smell your cat. I think your cat might be barking around the house, and they're like, what? Like, right. So, so it's, it is. You can become nose blind to certain yeah. smells because you're just in it so much so um yes that was a good one the diaper pail and then another thing that i want to say um preparing for the arrival of your newborn you also have to think about like mom and dad too because that's part of the preparation yeah um before i go into that i'm gonna jump back a little bit um in terms of preparing for the arrival of the newborn something that is important and i'm sure because everybody loves to save a coin Make sure that you contact your insurance to ensure oh. <laughs> that the hospitals that you are working with are in network with your insurance unless you choose to elect and go to um, a, hosp- a hospital that's out of network because that's your preference. You like what they offer and things like that. But a lot of times people get blindsided because they don't know that maybe certain things aren't covered under their insurance plans. Right. Um, So it's important to make sure you contact your insurance early on as you're preparing for the arrival of the baby to try to avoid and eliminate any surprise bills. Man, and that is such a huge one because Mm -hmm. not only is it going to help you and help your pockets for Mm -hmm. sure, but it's also the the longevity of, you know, your financial health Yeah, uh, with this newborn baby, Mm -hmm. making sure that you're in a financially good space now and for the future. And with hospital bills and definitely delivery bills, I mean, it can be thousands, tens, tens of thousands, thousands of tens of thousands of dollars. So you want to make sure that you get everything squared away with Mm -hmm. that so that it can, so that you can properly prepare for Mm -hmm. the cost of having a a, a child and the delivery and all the hospital bills. Exactly. Because you don't want to get stuck with a $10,000, $20,000 bill. Yeah. And then that eats into future Future financial finances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Future finances that you want to spend things on or or spend Mm -hmm. on toys or or, uh, trips Mm -hmm. or essential things for your baby and for you. You know? Yes. So important. So important. I'm glad you said that. Um, One last thing make sure you take the hospital tour. You should get to know the hospital where you are going to be having a life changing experience, yeah. both mom and dad, you yeah. know, because dad is going to be there, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and you want to make sure that it's a comfortable experience for everybody. Mm-hmm. If you are fortunate en- enough to get to meet like the labor and delivery nurses, that's awesome, too, because you'll, you'll know who else will be in the room. And I know when we did the hospital tour one it was fun yeah (laughs) it was just fun and really cool to see like wow this is how things operate and this is where we'll be for the um labor and delivery and then this is the room we'll be for the postpartum and you know the nurse that we met with who's going to be on the um labor and delivery team she's been with the hospital for 30 years so that gave us comfort too like we are in great hands perfect word Mm -hmm. it gave us comfort that we are in great hands and she covered so much before I could even ask a question, <laughs> she was already knocking through everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's important to take the hospital tour if you can get to know the space that you're going to be in, where you're spending your money, and most importantly, you know, where you're having your baby. You want it to be an experience that's positive, that's stress free, and definitely during a, doing a tour and getting more information beforehand could put your mind at ease. Last thing is. Moms, you can't forget about you. Make sure as you're preparing for the arrival of your newborn, you got to prepare for you as well. Mm -hmm. So making sure you have the necessary items to allow you to recover properly so that you can give the best attention to your little baby, your newborn. Um, So making sure you have the tux, you have the witch hazel for recovering, you have the maxi pads, you do your sits baths, things like that, disposable, disposable underwear, nursing bras and nursing pads all of those things are going to come in handy and as i mentioned before that roll away cart just store all of that bad boy on there so that way if it's (laughs) the middle of the night and you just leak through a bra or something and you got to change baby you got both there on the cart there you go you can take care of the baby and you can also take care of you so with that said we hope you guys enjoyed 
this video, we just wanted to cover some of um, the things that you will need to prepare for the arrival of the baby. There's many, many more, but we don't want to hold you guys up too much. We hope you enjoyed this video and we are going to sign off for today. My name is Jen. And I'm Shane. And we are the Yambors. And find joy in the journey. Bye. Peace. So conversations like this, I think, are super important because as new parents, we have to really evaluate ourselves and us as a couple.